danger. In this video, I'll be doing reactions that produce deadly fumes and I'll be handling corrosive acids. My work will be done in a fume hood to vent the deadly fumes away from me. Doing these reactions in an enclosed area or without proper safety equipment could cause serious injury or death. Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sri Tips, and today what I'm going to be working with is some carrot scrap here. I have a bag of 14K and a bag of 10K carrot scrap. And what we're going to do is take a little bit of this uh, carrot scrap out of here and then quart it and refine it just like we have in the past. Except this time, I'm not going to use silver to quart the gold. I'm going to use some clean copper wire. There were several questions concerning the inquartation of the carrot scrap in the comments section of one of my previous videos. And the most prevalent question was, why do we add silver to the carrot gold if we're just going to be taking it right back out? And the short answer is this. The carrot gold will resist the hot dilute nitric acid treatments. In a previous video, you'll recall that I prepared a hot dilute nitric acid solution and I took my 14K gold wedding band and dropped it into that hot nitric acid and it just sat there, nothing happened. That's because the hot dilute nitric acid cannot penetrate that gold with the gold content this high. The gold content must be reduced down to around 25% by alloying additional silver or in this case, in this video, I'll be alloying additional copper to get the gold content down around 25%. So in order to make those hot nitric acid treatments uh, work, the first thing we have to do is alloy some silver or in this case in this video I'm going to be using copper because silver and copper are both soluble in nitric acid so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some soluble metals that are soluble in hot dilute nitric acid to the carrot gold to get the gold content down around 25% 14K gold is almost 60% pure gold. 10K gold is about 41 or 42% pure gold, alloyed with silver and other base metals to make it more durable. Well, with the carrot of the gold this high, the hot dilute nitric acid cannot penetrate into these metals. After I add the copper and get the content of the gold down in these carat pieces to around 25%, then, and only then, will the hot dilute nitric acid treatments be able to do their job. For this experiment, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a little bit of our carat gold here. I'm not going to use the whole batch. And I've got a handful that I pulled out right here. We're going to measure this. And I've got 38.9 grams of 14K gold. So that's what we're going to use for this experiment. All right, to see how much copper I need, I've got 38 point, I'm going to say 38.9 times 1.265. So I need 49.2 grams copper. Alright, zero to scale here and I off camera clipped up the right amount of copper that I'm going to need. That's 48.9. That's just fine. That'll work for this experiment. Here's our charge of metal and I'm going to transfer it into this larger melt dish here to do this melt. And I'm going to go ahead and put this map gas torch on it and start the melt.
there's something primal about watching metal go from a solid to a liquid under a flame. This footage is speeded up eight times normal speed. In this footage, I used my oxyacetylene torch to complete the melt, and I use a graphite rod to stir the metal to make sure it's alloyed properly. And then I pour it into some uh, tap water in a metal container to form granules for the next step. Okay, here's our encorded gold. It's been encorded with copper. As you can see, it's got a much more red appearance to it. This is how rose gold is made, by the way. Extra copper is added to the, uh, to the gold alloy to get it to uh, look this color. I'm gonna get this rinsed off, get into a beaker, and we'll get some hot nitric acid treatments on it now. Here is our uh, gold encorted with copper to get the gold content down around 25% pure gold in there with copper and base metals. I've got it sitting in some distilled water. I'm going to add some concentrated nitric acid now. An equal amount and we're going to start dissolving out the silver copper and the other base metals. So just because we added copper here doesn't exclude any silver that we're going to recover from this batch here because carrot gold is alloyed with silver. So there's still going to be some silver in there. It's been on the heat now for about five minutes. From here on out the refining process is virtually identical to if I had used silver instead of copper. And one more time, the reason we add the copper to that carrot gold is to reduce the gold content of the carrot gold down from around 60%, which is what 14K gold is, down to around 25%. Then and only then will the nitric acid be able to penetrate into those granules and remove all the silver and all the base metals. This has been sitting in the uh, hot dilute nitric now for about an hour. What I'm gonna do is take and pour this off now and I'm gonna save this because this will contain some silver. Now we're gonna add some fresh distilled water here another uh, couple of hundred milliliters and I'm going to put in some fresh nitric acid here same amount we'll keep dissolving out the rest of this copper and the other base metals that are in here this is the second hot dilute nitric treatment. So we got two now. This second nitric treatment was on there for about an hour. So uh, I took it down, emptied out the uh, second treatment there, added some fresh reagents, put it back on the heat for the third dilute nitric acid treatment. It's been about five minutes since I added that third hot dilute nitrate treatment. It's just now beginning to boil. You'll notice that there's some fumes evolving. 
and the liquid has turned a pale blue color, I'll continue to add hot dilute nitric acid treatments until I don't get any more fumes evolving and the solution stays crystal clear like water. This is the liquid that we've been pouring off from the inquarted gold. Remember that we didn't add any silver to the inquarted gold. We just added copper to it. But to show you that carrot gold has or silver in it, I'm going to do a test here with some hydrochloric acid. And you'll see that we get a cloud of silver chloride forming when we add hydrochloric acid. This is hot dilute nitric treatment number five. And I am going to do something you should never do. I'm going to stick a glass rod in here and I'm going to crush one of these nuggets. And make sure we don't get a burst of reaction from copper that's still in there. I don't see anything. So I think we're good here. As you can see, our uh, copper and corded gold has no fumes inside the beaker there. The uh, solution is colorless. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pour this off into this beaker over here that has the rest of the encorded gold in it that I encorded with silver. I'm going to pour this off into here because I'll need to uh, dissolve out the rest of the silver and base metals out of this side over here, this encorded gold in this other beaker. I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water to our gold here. Set it up on low heat and let it simmer for a while. And then when this gets done boiling or simmering, I'll add that to our other beaker over here. Alright, our uh, gold's been simmering in some distilled water now for about 20 minutes. I'm going to pour this off into our uh, beaker over here that has the uh, encorded gold that's been encorded with silver. And now what I'll do is I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid to the gold here. Cover this up. About 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. And I'm going to add some concentrated sulfuric acid here precipitate out any lead that may have been present. I'm going to add some concentrated nitric acid, about six milliliters. And we'll put this up on the heat and let this start dissolving. Took me a while to get that all to go in the solution. Everything is dissolved now. We'll pull it down off the heat, let it cool down. I allowed the gold to cool off. Added an ice cube to it. So we've got it nice and chilled. And now I'm gonna pour it right into the filter here. We're really clean the gold up nice, very little solid material in the filter there. Now what we'll do is transfer this into a beaker and precipitate it with some sodium metal bisulfite.
we're going to precipitate out your pure gold with sodium metabisulfite. Do it. The gold has been allowed to settle completely. It took a couple of hours, and what we're going to do now is pour off this waste solution. The solution will go in my stock pot, but right now I'm going to pour it off into this waste container, and then we're going to gather the gold up and get it into this filter inside this funnel. Now I'll rinse the gold with some hydrochloric acid right in the filter. Now I'm going to put the uh, gold still in the filter right into the uh, beaker that it came out of. I'm going to cover this about 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. We're going to put this up on the heat and re-dissolve it. As before, I'm going to add about one half milliliter sulfuric acid here just in case there's any lead present. Now I'm going to add some concentrated nitric acid here. That's about nine milliliters. Just let this dissolve. Okay, everything's gone into solution now. It took about 15 minutes. The solution appears cloudy because of the filter that's dissolved in there with the gold. Got a couple ice cubes here, going to add it to the solution to cool it off. Got the solution cooled off. Going to pull it through this filter and then we'll precipitate it one more time. Now we're going to rinse all the uh, color out of the filter there. Alright, the filter is snow white, nothing in there. I'm going to take this funnel off now and I'm going to pour the solution into this clean beaker and we'll precipitate it with some stump out. Okay, now let's get down here. 
close. And what I'll do is add some stump out by bonide, which is sodium metabisulfite, and precipitate out the pure gold. just about there. Gold has been allowed to settle now. It's got a nice tan brown color to it. What I'm going to do is pour off this waste solution into this container. Uh, this waste solution will be added to my stock pot later on. And then we're going to get the gold into this filter paper, put it into a melt dish, melt it into a nice little bar here. Ready to put a little hydrochloric acid here. Now we're going to take the gold, get it into this uh, melt dish down here. Now we're going to move it over here to the melt table and uh, melt it up into a uh, bar. Here's our bright, shiny, three nines fine bar of pure gold. Let's put it up here on the uh, scale and see what we got. 21.9 grams. 21.9 grams of 999 fine gold. see myself in it. It's got a mirror finish. Very nice.
Okay, here's our finished bar. 999 fine gold. Three tips, 21.8 grams. Let's just verify this weight right quick. And you'll see it goes up to nine, but it's just at the cusp of being 21.9. So I put 21.8 on it. So you're going to get an extra tenth of a gram there. This will conclude the encording with copper video. I got me a nice, uh, nice gold bar here. I've got my name stamped on it. The weight, 21.8 grams, 999 fine gold. And what we'll do is we'll put this up for bids on my eBay store. My eBay username has been changed, by the way, from Baffless to match my YouTube username, Sri Tips. I just wanted to show you the uh, results we got here. I had 38.9 grams of 14K gold. Multiply that by 0.583, which is the theoretical yield on 14K. And I should have got 22.67 grams. The actual yield was 21.85 grams. And this is normal because uh, carrots gold is rarely right on target with the amount of gold it's supposed to contain. It can contain up to one half carat less than it's actually stamped. So your carrot gold can actually be 13.5 carat and still legally be stamped 14K. All right, we demonstrated how to uh, purify the gold. <clears throat> with uh, copper and I think the copper did a real good job of getting this gold cleaned up better I think than silver there was no silver chloride to deal with you've seen the color of those solutions and how clear and bright they were so uh, I think uh, using copper to import the gold provides an advantage in that respect this will conclude the video thanks for watching